This one episode of Clone Wars is so impressive. It has so much packed into it, a full episode with no good guys, literally a full scale war of bad guys versus bad guys. Not to mention it's Grievous and his droid army versus Ventress and the Night Sisters, plus the witch magic raising the zombies from the dead. Recently, we watched the Battle of Rishi in slow motion where they first introduced the commando droids and they absolutely rip the clones apart. But compare it to this episode and it's a night and day difference. The Night Sisters take these out like it's nothing. They even go up against multiple in hand-to-hand -hand combat and come out on top. For how great they were at it, it's a shame that they all died here. Leave it to Clone Wars to kill off an entire race and call it children's television. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next video. We've got more coming out soon that you're not going to want to miss. Now with that out of the way, let's jump right into the video. This planet looks so cool. I kind of wish we got more episodes surrounding Dathomir. I mean, we did get a good arc and the birth of Savage Opress and Ventress going back in this whole massacre episode, but still, like, there's so much cool lore around the Night Sisters and the Witches. I don't think we ever got to see their relationships with Rancors. That was a huge thing we talked about in the Rancor video a while back. Night Sisters and the Witches would tame these and they would work in a symbiotic relationship where they would ride them around, feed them, but the Rancors would protect them in herds. Honestly, they could do so much with Dathomir. I love these weapons they have. I forget what they're made of or what kind of electricity or how they describe them, but these are so cool. Also, their outfits kind of give off like evil Tinkerbell vibes. I don't know if that's just me or if anyone else sees that too. What kind of under layer is this? This is cool. Is this water? It's probably magical mist or something. Oh, that is really cool how she has these attached to the back of her back. Sometimes she has them on her hips and other times she has them just behind her. I wonder why she switches between them. Easier access, doesn't get in the way as much maybe. Time has come at last to take revenge on Asajj Ventress. Crazy how quick he is to kill all of the Night Sisters, everyone on Dathomir. I also really love this episode because it just pits two different bad guy forces against each other. Dooku, Grievous, and the Separatists versus Ventress and the Night Sisters and Mother Talzin. I feel like it's not often where good guys are omitted completely from an episode. You see the little droid has to jog to keep up with how fast Grievous walks. I've never noticed that, that's kind of funny. Jeez, this looks like the same amount of troops they used to invade Naboo, the Gungan forest swamp, when they brought all these. There was like the same amount it feels like. There are so many going to Dathomir. They're not even going to occupy, they're just going to wipe them out, literally massacre them. Look at them all doing their little dancey dance. They look like Sims just in the corner of the house when you're not like telling them to do anything and they're just doing their own thing. I'm privileged to be your sister. Thank you, Karis. Oh, I forgot they introduced Karis, this night sister. They introduce her like she's going to be a main character, as per Clone Wars usual, and you'll never guess what happens to her by the end of the episode. Droid fighters, scatter! Whoa. Okay, so this vulture droid comes in and like bombs them in the middle of this campfire party. They're all standing around this campfire here and there's a little bombing run, right? But look at this, Mother Talzin doesn't turn and run away. She like force pushes herself backwards. I was like, what is it she drops? There's two things right here and right here moving downwards to the ground. And I couldn't figure it out, but I think it's just her cup. This one had a cup too. I don't know if that's Karis. They all look the same, sorry. And I know you can't see them drop it, but they kind of left it in there as a little detail of like they left immediately. Mother Talzin doesn't even run. She kind of force pushes herself back before the bombs hit. The bombs hit the campfire directly, which is crazy. Yeah, for that bomb being a direct hit, it killed absolutely none of them. It did almost zero damage, which is weird because in other times they bomb whole cities and it like destroys everyone. But uh, yeah, this didn't do that. I mean, it literally hits them point blank. Oh look, there's MTT tanks, cool. Nice, got B2 battle droids now. Some AATs. Oh, they got tri-fighters coming in too. Not that the bombers did anything. I mean, these aren't gonna do anything. Oh my gosh, they killed her off so quickly. They literally just introduced this new character, Karis, and they killed her off within like two minutes of scream time. Actually, can we go back and see how soon they introduced her? 
They introduce her into the episode uh, five minutes in, and then they kill her off less than two minutes later. They introduce Karis like she's gonna be a main character and she straight up gets mauled in 120 seconds. I tell you, they did not hesitate to kill off main characters in Clone Wars. Each episode, main character, dead. I know they kind of meant for that to mean something, but I mean, you literally like said hi two minutes ago. She's a night sister. That's about as deep as it's gonna get. They killed one of your own and you knew her name. These bows are so freaking cool. They not only shoot energy that just appears from with inside the bow, but they also use energy to shoot it. So if you look closely, this one right here is holding the bow with two hands. This little stick right here, or this one here, is a detached separate part from the main bow. So when she grabs it, it illuminates and connects with the tips of the bow. It's not connected at first and then it connects and it also lets the energy arrow appear and then she pulls it back with tension and then releases it, shoots the energy bolt forward and then the string disappears again. Look at this one. She lets it go, shoots it forward and it just like magnets back to the middle of the bow. And then when she grabs it, it reconnects itself and draws energy from all three points of the little handle. How cool is that? You just never run out of ammo? Do you have to charge a battery? I don't get it. It was cool to see them put uh, magic against battle droids in a war. It was really cool to see this. Her just unleashing on poor B1 battle droids. Look at this, they have no chance. And she's just killing them one after the other. They, she doesn't even have to try. She's not close enough to get damage. It looks like it just short circuits them. I mean, she's sending so much electricity through them. Poor George just face plants afterwards. Do you see this guy right here? He's not shooting, he's just kind of like hanging out. He almost looks kind of sad. He doesn't get hit till here, but the whole time before that, he's just like looking down at the ground like, oh, I'm next. That's really satisfying. I really like seeing Ventress just cut down these battle droids and the Night Sisters destroy them. Ooh, look at that. Was that a Palpatine inspired twist? Oh my goodness. That was beautiful. Right into a B1 battle droid's head. I love how the droids just can't hit the Night Sisters for anything. Oh, nice shot. Look at this. High ground once again. Shoots and just nails a little B1 battle droid. Falls into the mist. Oh, hits another one. This one here shoots and just nails him. Look, he has that short circuit where his trigger finger just pulls and fires off after he's dead. <gasps> Is that a commando droid? Two commando droids running up the tree branches, the roots. There's so much droid fire. I cannot believe that no one's hitting the Night Sisters. And also what a shot. They're running sideways and they have freaking laser bows. She shoots them in the knee, trigger finger goes off. Boom, short circuits, shoots upward, of course. She one shots him and then she turns and look at this, snipes this dude right in the forehead while he's running. Look at that beautiful fall off that tree root. That is so perfect. Good shot. Oh my gosh, she's on a kill streak. Three headshots in a row, that is beautiful. Boom, one, two, three, that was sick. For Night Sisters being able to use magic and all, uh, fighting battle droids with blasters uh, with swords, just normal swords, is a little rudimentary, no? I feel like they should go get some laser daggers or laser swords. I mean, I feel like they wouldn't be bad with lightsabers. Does she karate kick this guy? How does he explode? Is it a magic kick? Is it like Luke's force kick from Return of the Jedi? Yeah, she kicks him and he just kind of explodes. I don't really know. Oh, wait, wait, there's two battle droids. There's one, two, I think she kicks this battle droid because they both fly backwards, I'm not sure. This one gets attacked with a sword. She chop his arm off. Oh wait, she kind of knocks his blaster out of his hand. Yeah, see it's gone and then she slices him in half. Oh, that move is so sick. Not only did she do a little spinning jump backwards to slice them in half, she also stabs them both in the chest and then just drives them into the ground. Oh, and then follows up with double stab behind her to the super battle droid. Whoa, little hidden door in the wall action. What does it matter if people see her? Aren't they on the same side? I feel like Daka is not chilling in like a room, but she's chilling in like her grave or like a tomb. Like they just kind of left her to die like she's almost dead and she's just hanging out in solitude in the walls. Then I will begin the chant of resurrection. 
Not only does she look creepy, but the way she talks is terrifying. Okay, so you see these things throughout the entire episode, these like little pods that hang from the trees and you're like, oh, that's a weird type of plant. And then Daka does this like ritual and this green mist shoots out and then it wraps around these pods and zombies fall out. They don't bury their fallen underground, they bury them in the trees. Can you imagine if we had that? That would be so freaky to drive by a graveyard. That looks nasty. Good job on Star Wars zombies, by the way. That looks like a pure zombie. The brain invaders, yeah, that's zombie-esque, but I mean, this is zombie zombie. This is teeth falling out. They've actually been dead. That is gnarly. Look at them just falling out, crawling around like spiders. I mean, this episode is just nightmare fuel. I love that they kind of fall on their heads as soon as they <laughs> fall out of the pods. Just bonk. Each one just hits their head. And then they made them run fast. Energetic zombies are the worst. Slow zombies, sure, you can walk away and it's fine. Energetic ones, you have a problem. Okay, this this is sick. So the, the two commando droids run up to this night sister and shoot her laser bow out of her hand. So instead of like fleeing or like taking out a blaster, she just charges them and engages them in melee combat. Commando droids. She grabs his blaster, turns it, and shoots him in the head with it. That is insane. Straight kick to the gut for the other one. And then shoots him in the head. Oh, now she's got dual wielding blasters. How freaking cool is that? Last time we looked at Commando Droids for the Rishi Outpost was the first time they were introduced to the series. So they were like full beast mode going crazy killing clones. And then we see them in this episode and the Night Sisters are making fools out of them. Oh my gosh. We were talking about this bomb when we did the Zillow Beast episodes. I don't know if you remember, but the Dugs on Malastare, they got to use this weapon the Republic made that launched a bomb into the battlefield that destroyed every electrical device, just basically a massive EMP. So all the clones and flesh and people survived, but all the droids died. There's still a blast and a shockwave in the center of it, but once it expands, it just covers the whole battlefield and knocks out all the droids at once. The Separatists had the opposite. We were talking about the Monkey People episode with Ayla Sakura and Anakin where they crashed and had to help the little rolling ball people. Yeah, the Separatists were testing out their version of that, which did the opposite. It was like a fireball launcher that the droids could survive, but it killed all living organisms. And this is the next time that they use that weapon. I totally forgot about this. Yeah, the exfoliator. Fire the defoliator, not exfoliator, because it defoliates everything. Look, it just explodes into this massive fireball. I feel like it had a bigger radius the first time they showcased it. I could be wrong. I mean, geez, look at the battlefield. There's a bunch of Night Sisters running in this direction to the left and in the back. It doesn't look like it actually gets any of them though. And then the droids are marching in between the two packs of Night Sisters. Oh my gosh, did someone die? The first victim of a defoliator? Look, there's a Night Sister right here in the far back who just isn't quite fast enough to make it. You see her one second and then incinerated. <laughs> that is a tough way to go. Also, it was bold of them to stop so close to where it stopped. How did they know it was gonna stop there? That is terrifying. It's literally just a push back and forth the whole episode. For them, doing this entire war contained in a 20 minute episode is insane. Great job. Also, if you wonder how effective zombies are against Star Wars enemies like battle droids, just look at this. Oh my gosh, that one zombie took out two, three, four, five, six, seven. The first zombie takes out seven battle droids. This one back here gets just thrown to the side, manhandled, and then this zombie jumps on this droid's face. Rips his head off, very nice. Wait, did he look to feel where his head was? <laughs> what? The zombie comes and rips this battle droid's head off, and then he reaches his hand up to feel where his head should be. That didn't kill him? What? Ripping battle droid's heads off doesn't kill them? Ventress Force picks him up and throws him out of the tank. Well, she forced through him really far. Oh, this is so cool. So this seems like the final push. 
Like Ventress commandeered an AAT and has Night Sisters strapped up all over it, pushing Grievous, like pushing back all of his forces. I mean, look at these guys. They're still sniping people from the top of the tank. And what's crazy is each time they're shooting them, it's usually headshots. Taking them off his feet. Look at this guy. Another headshot taking him off his feet. Okay, here's a waste shot. Still, just crumples him. Even the super battle droids, they get one shot at. This guy got hit on his elbow and it took him down. I don't know the physics of that, how that worked. This is so cool. I forgot about this. The B2 super battle droids, they just try to stop the tank. It's like running in front of a car, but they probably could actually do it. Stepping on their heads. I love that. Yoda did that in the first episode, I'm pretty sure. Oh. The zombies are almost the most brutal villains of this episode. Okay, so did he hit Ventress there? It looks like he did. I guess he shoots through her arm, yeah. Nice little step on the head. Beautiful. I mean, look at all this blaster fire from the droids. No one can hit her. The classic Grievous move. So cool he broke this out for Ventress. It's crazy also that Dooku almost died here. If Grievous wasn't there to stop Mother Talzin eventually, he would have straight up died, right? Oh my gosh. Even for a Sith, that would hurt to take Grievous's giant claw foot to the face. It like kicked her right in the neck or the upper chest. She took it like a champ though. This poor zombie, he's so bored. She, I think they're all females. <laughs> this droid has to be so scared being the closest one to the zombies. Also, wild that Ventress be Grievous. I don't remember her like straight up winning fair and square like that. Also, a lot of Night Sisters get hit right here. This one here gets knocked back. This one in front gets shot. Oof, someone finally hit Ventress. I mean, that's really cool. I would, I'm so glad they put the zombies just, oh my gosh, jeez. Uh, no way. Look at this Night Sister right here. You can barely see her. She's off camera. She does a spinning kick to a super battle droid. We've only seen them do it to the small ones, but to a super battle droid, that's impressive because it's like two feet taller than her. I love that Grievous is back here still like fending off all the zombies. And just like that, the tide has turned. <laughs> I mean, Grievous is having a blast or he's struggling. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Stabbed this one clean through. I mean, but does it actually stop them? He's more so just fending them off, not even slicing them up. I kind of wish he would slice them up. Just slice and dice into a bunch of pieces. Oh, he ripped her arm off. He's holding her arm in her hand and just threw her into the ground. What does he do with her arm? He whacks her with her own arm and she's still not dead. Oh my gosh. Alien who? Nice, another headshot for a commando droid too. Oh, look at this. Jump up midair, shoot him in the waist. Okay, so just freeze frame like right here. How did this Night Sister think that going up against General Grievous with three lightsabers with her one normal sword was a good idea? He didn't even try. In what 14 million outcomes did she see a universe where she survived that encounter? <laughs> yes, look, this is exactly what happens. A Night Sister tries to cut him with her sword and he just slices the tip off. She's like, oh, how did that happen? It's like she's never seen a lightsaber before. Did he just cut her head off? Oh my gosh, I think he did. That wasn't a zombie either. I think he just chopped her head off. Also, why is he only using three of his arms and three lightsabers? Anyone else notice that? We're storming the witch's lair. Nope, she's dead. Seeing Grievous just go crazy makes me really wanna watch the O3 Clone Wars miniseries movies. Can't believe that Daka's dead. I mean, I can, but another major character they just offed so quickly in this episode. She probably had her own two minutes of screen time too. Also, uh, this episode was called Massacre for a Reason. This one gets shot in the midsection. Same here, same there. Ah, interesting. So Grievous kills Daka and then all of the zombies drop, except one, and I'm not sure why. They all drop, they're all dead. Commando droids are like, ah, oh, easy pickings for the rest of them kneel down and shoot the rest. This one zombie is still standing. She actually outlives two or three of the Night Sisters. I don't know how she's alive. The will to live. Oof, shot in the midsection, midsection, and right in the chest, ouch.
Oh look, she does her little jump backwards again. This time into the spirit realm. It's so crazy that Ventress comes to like join the Night Sisters for one episode and then Dooku and Grievous wipe the entire race out. All the Night Sisters are gone now. Ventress and Mother Talzin are the only two left. Let me know if there's another battle you would like to see next. Until then, go watch this video and remember, the Force will be with you always.